John 19. What a way to ditch responsibility, huh? All right, John 19. And we'll read verse 28, John chapter 19. Uh, we'll read verse 28. It's one of the most famous passages in the Bible. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was dying on the cross and all he wanted was a drink of water. But it's very sad, he didn't even get water to drink. A pitiful state. John chapter 19 and verse 28 reads, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. I would like for you to picture yourself to be Jesus Christ. If you were in his shoes and you died on the cross, suffered the same agony that he felt, suffered the same thirst that he felt, imagine the flame that's uh, burning so much inside you. And in the cross, it is said that you would suffocate on it, suffocating yourself, just pulling yourself up on those spikes and you wouldn't care less if those spikes inflamed the nerves inside and gave you unbearable pain. You just wanted a gasp of air and so you would pull yourself up on the spike, breathe, and then collapse down on the cross. Imagine if you were in Jesus' shoes and your flesh was the one dying on the cross with sin. That's what the Bible says, that when Jesus Christ died on the cross and suffered, it was for our sins. And it's supposed to symbolize and picture our flesh. When Jesus died on the cross, it's supposed to picture our flesh dying to sin. Dying to sin. And what I want you is to think about that. I know that Jesus Christ, he only died once and he will never die again. But sometimes I wonder because the Holy Spirit is inside us and God is living inside us that he still feels the same grief and the pain that he felt on the cross. And that's basically sin, basically because of our sin. And do you hear the Holy Spirit nature within you crying out for water to drink, for the spiritual things of God? You know, Jesus Christ, all he ever wanted was a spiritual relationship with the Father. But the Father abandoned his Son and Jesus Christ cried out, Why did you forsake me? I wonder if Jesus is crying that again. A lot of times we have shut out the Holy Spirit nature within us because our eyes and our ears and our hearts have been too preoccupied with the things of this world and our own fleshly lusts and its own desires that we have drowned out the cry of the Holy Spirit, of the one who died on the tree who cried out, I thirst, I thirst. I hope that you would regain and recall your thirst for God because it is crying. The title of my message is, I thirst. Let's pray. Father God, fill within me unction, uh, the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray that today's preaching will convict people, change their lives. Uh, Father God, you are certainly putting me to the test right now because uh, my flesh is very, very weak, Heavenly Father, and I pray that uh, it will be overpowered by the, the crying nature of the Spirit. And may you get the glory in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right. So... The first point, let's go to Judges chapter 15. Judges chapter 15. Uh, for some of you probably wondering, you know, when I was praying about uh, my flesh being weak, don't think that it's something bad that happened, so don't worry about that. The Lord's been good. Uh, however, uh, the past two weeks, this has been kind of new, but the past two weeks I haven't been sleeping much. I'm still trying to figure out what the problem is. So if you can pray for me on that, I'd appreciate it. So I've been only running on four to five hours. I don't know why. It's pretty strange. So just pray for me, all right, on that. So don't think it's something else, okay? So the Lord's been good to us. 
our church and everything. Amen. He's been taking care of us. So just right now, I'm a little drained, so uh, be patient with me. Judges chapter 15, and we'll read verse 18. Verse 18. Now, my first point is the thirst of Samson. The thirst of Samson. Judges chapter 15, verse 18. And he was sore thirst and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant. And now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? Now, as I go through every passage today, it's going to be kind of like a historical sermon or doctrinal sermon, whatever you want to call it. And what we're going to do is go through every instance in the Bible or most of the instances in the Bible where there was a person and the Lord involved with a thirst issue. Where there was a person and the Lord involved with a thirst issue. And we see the first case right here where Samson cried out to the Lord, where he was thirsty. Why was that? Because even though he was a superman, even though he had all the power and the talent and the inner strength of the Holy Spirit, he slew a thousand Philistines. So he was very tired and exhausted, and he cried out to the Lord for water to drink, and the Lord gave him water to drink. Samson is a great type in the Bible of our flesh. Uh, being so weak in the flesh in spite of so much power that he gained. That's right. And I see that very much alive and very much likened to people today. Unfortunately, us people, we take it as we don't need church. We don't need the Bible. We don't need prayer. We don't need soul winning. We don't have a thirst for the things of God because just like Samson, we're just overridden by the flesh. And uh, you know so much Bible, you're already a Bible believer. So there's no need to compare you to a charismatic who might read more Bible than you, who might pray longer than you, who might attend church and be involved in ministries more so than you because you know better than they do. And you're a Bible believer. So there's no need to comparison, no need to get convicted. And you don't realize that that's what you are. You're a Samson overridden by the flesh that you don't think you need the Bible, you don't think you need prayer, you don't think you need church. But it doesn't matter how spiritually strong you think you are, just like Samson who thought he was spiritually strong with all that Holy Ghost power within him, he was very weak and he needed water to drink. You need water to drink. And I don't care if we go back to back blowout meetings, you need that Bible reading and that prayer when you go back home all exhausted. I don't care if uh, you had enough meetings in the church. No, there's a spiritual side that cries out, I thirst. There's more that I want. I don't care how many times that you have passed out tracts or won souls to salvation. There's a spiritual side there that cries out, I thirst. I thirst. And the only way that you can cry out, I thirst, is you get that body worn out. And Samson, with all that spiritual power, he fought and he fought and he fought. And it was until he was reaching that breaking point that he realized, hey, I need water to drink. Amen. I'm not that much of a superman like I thought I was. Yeah. I need water. You know what would get you thirst for the things of God? It's when God puts that thorn in your flesh because yeah. you're too full of yourself. And because you think you have it all. Or you know, when there's some hardship that happens in your life. Or when the devil is onto your tail and just giving you hell and you wonder why those things are happening, perhaps the Lord is trying to tell you that now is the time that you realize that you're naked without your armor and you need the full armor of God. Get back to the Bible again. Get back to church and get back to the spiritual things of God. If un any of you are undergoing a spiritual attack and you're getting worn out, don't you hear the Holy Spirit crying, I thirst. It's too hard to bear that pain in your mind, in your heart, and in your soul. There's so much pain going on in there, inside. With all that pain going on inside, the Lord's crying out. The spiritual nature is crying out, I thirst. I thirst. But you still think you can overcome the devil's attack. You still think that you can teach and preach that book. You still think that you can uh, participate in the ministry, but you're going by the flesh like Samson, 
burning out every ounce and every energy. When's the last time you opened that book? When's the last time that you got right with God on the altar? When's the last time that your Holy Spirit nature was fed with water out of a rock? You, this church will wear out real soon. Don't think that you can last forever like this. Oh, we went through so much. I already know all that, all right? But God's, but it's about time that the Lord is trying to teach you. God's trying to teach you, hey, the spiritual side. I thirst. Took you this long to appreciate church. Took you this long to appreciate the Bible. Took you this long to appreciate brethren. Took you this long to appreciate a soul getting saved. It's when the Lord stuck that thorn in your flesh and you're fighting and you're fighting and you're fighting. Hey, don't you dare go by the strength of your flesh. Let me repeat that again. Don't you dare go by the strength of your flesh. You need that book. You need time with God. You need church. I thirst. Psalm 42. Psalm 42 and verse 2. Psalm chapter 42, verse 2. My second point is the thirst of suspense. The thirst of suspense. Does your spiritual nature inside you cry out for thirst in suspense? It has an eagerness, an expectation that awaits for the next. Do you have a thirst in your soul when you open up that book that I can't wait for what the Lord is going to show to me? Do you have a thirst inside when you come to church? I can't wait to hear what God wants to speak to me today to get something right with him. Do you have a thirst of suspense? Psalm chapter 42, verse 2. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Do you have a thirst in your soul that cries out, when is the next revival meeting? When is the next summer camp? When is the next blowout? When is the next teaching, pastor? When is the next preaching? When is the next time that I can just get away from that godforsaken workplace and school and everything going on in the home and in all this ruckus around the world and just take time with God? Do you have a thirst that awaits in eagerness for the things of God, or a distaste, or a turnoff, something that has a disgust and has no thirst of suspense. There's something about Bible reading, church, soul winning, singing, something about it that turns you off. It doesn't have an eagerness, an addiction, like you do for other things in this life. Did you ever have something in this world, in this life, in your flesh, that you enjoyed and tasted something good that you wanted more? that you couldn't wait for the next one to happen. If you had that in your life, everyone has that in their lives. Some, there's something in your life that somebody went through that they have, but it's sad that you don't have that for the spiritual things of God. Do you have something to look forward to? You don't. You know why? You weren't really blessed by it. You know why? It wasn't something new that spoke out to you. You know why? It wasn't something that came real to you. That's the reason why. You don't have a thirst of suspense. When's the last time that you opened up that blessed old book and God really spoke to you? That you fell on your knees in prayer and that you really spoke to God? I thirst! Do you hear the spiritual nature inside you crying out, I thirst? I'll tell you why you're not thirsty. Because... Uh, you're burdened by it. A person who has a thirst for the things of God, nothing they find to be a burden. Not even a split in the church. Not even tension in their own lives. Not even just the oh, old English out of the King James Bible. Not, a, not much effort when they kneel on their, uh, fall on their knees to pray. Those are the people who are thirsty. When they find nothing to be a burden. But you make those things a burden to you. That's why you lost your thirst. There are things in the life, things in your life that became a hindrance. That's why you're not thirsty. Too busy. Too busy. Things going on in the home, in the work, in school. 
and you can be all by yourself and you have none of those things, you're still busy. We live in a day and age that's so messed up and rotten that there's a person who practically has all the time in the world and they just say, I'm just too busy. <laughs> they got hindrances in their lives. That's the reason why there's no expectation, a desire for the next one, for the spiritual things of God. If you find something that became a hindrance, if you find something that became a burden, you need to inspect yourself. You need to see your heart. Do you see the Holy Spirit inside you crying out, I thirst? Psalm 63, verse 1. Psalm chapter 63 and verse 1. My third point is the thirst of suffocation. The thirst of suffocation. The reason why your spiritual nature will long and thirst for the things of God is because it's in survival mode. It realizes that practically I cannot function or live or do anything right until I get something spiritual to feed me inside. There's no way that a baby would last forever if you don't feed the baby. The baby will die. You know what's unbearable is that the Holy Spirit is eternal and sealed and cannot leave you and it cannot die. But you're torturing the Holy Spirit nature inside you with unbearable hunger and thirst. Don't you hear the Holy Spirit nature with that inside you crying out and longing for just one word, one word of that verse that you're reading, one verse to hide in your heart, just one word that you can say to God, one soul to see to get saved, Amen. one track to just do a deed and to pass out, to plant a seed. Amen. Psalm 63, verse 1 says, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. If you're suffocating so much, you would do anything. You would fight hard you would do anything for a breath of fresh air. Amen. But the problem with people today is they don't, they're not, they don't sense the Holy Spirit within them suffocating itself to death. If you would only know, then you wouldn't make up any excuse in the world to hinder your Bible reading, your prayer, your church time, and whatever spiritual thing you're doing for the Lord. If you realize that the Holy Spirit nature inside you is suffocating, if we got rid of your food, if we got rid of your air, if we got rid of your water... You would do anything and you would cry out for anything just to put food inside you and to get a breath of fresh air. You'd fight hard. You'd walk long distances and mile in a dry and thirsty wilderness just to find water anywhere and to fight and to fight and to not just give up and whine and cry. No, you would be frantic. You would be desperate and search and work and work and push yourself to just get a drop of water to drink. But you don't have that with the Word of God. You don't have that with prayer. You don't have that for church attendance. You don't have that for soul winning. You don't have that for the spiritual things of God. And that spiritual nature inside you is suffocating itself to death. You know why you drink every time the spiritual things of God? If you realize you're in survival mode. Are you in survival mode? Do you hear the Holy Spirit crying within you, I thirst? Psalm 143, Psalm 143. We'll look at verse 6. Psalm chapter 143 and verse 6. My fourth point is the thirst of stretching, the thirst of stretching. Now, if there was a glass of cool water right in front of you and you're just outside in the heat all day long, when you look at that glass of cool water, what are you going to do when you see it and you're dying of thirst? You're looking at it. Are you going to stare at it all day? Are you going to go, man, I just wish. No, you know what you're going to do? That's what you're going to do without hesitation, without second thought. You know what people do with, when they have that blessed old book in their hands? They just look at it. They just look at it. They just go, oh, it's just too much work, you know. 
Uh, it's just so much effort. And well, I don't have time. No, no, no. No hesitation, no second thought. But you don't have that thirst where you stretch out your hand and just grab that book out of the shelf and open it and read it. You don't have that thirst where you just stretch out your hands up to heaven and give a prayer and a cry to the Lord. You don't have that thirst in your heart where you just pick up that hymnal and just sing a song for the Lord. You don't have that thirst where you stretch out your hand and then just take out that track and give it to someone. No, hands still stuck in the pocket. Just staring every soul that passes by you and let, sending them to hell. How about that? That's the thirst of stretching. Psalm 143, verse 6, the Bible says, I will stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land, Selah. You know, when there's a, the spiritual nature inside you is crying out for thirst, your hand will stretch. It will go forth and reach out to stretch to grab a cup of cool water. Cool water. No hesitation, no second thought. It's a natural instinct to do. Isn't it natural for you if you want a cup of water that you're going to use your hand for it? Go, go like this at the water fountain and drink. Isn't that a natural instinct? No complaint, no whining, no second thought, nothing. Isn't it a natural instinct to wake up in the morning and to open that blessed book and to read it? Isn't it a natural thing to do to just fall on your knees and talk to the Father up in heaven? Isn't it a natural thing to come to church? Not, I'm too busy, I'm too sick, there's so many things going on, and, you know, I have a trial going on in my life and there's a tension going on in the church. No, isn't it natural to just come? Yes. It can be even the whole people here could be messed up. But if you got the right church, the right book, the right preaching that's done and the right church that's going on besides the people, it should be natural to come to the house of God and to worship him. Isn't it natural to win a soul? No one's out with me street preaching. No one's out with me to soul win. So it's very nervous and I don't think I can. Isn't it natural to tell someone how to be saved from hell? Isn't that natural? It's a natural instinct to do that. We've lost our natural instinct for the word of God, for prayer, for winning a soul, to talk about the things of God. No, instead it became a work. It became an effort. The fleshly things have become our natural instinct to drive every day to work, to brush our teeth. That became more of the natural instinct than prayer and the word of God. Your teeth can go rotten and you can walk without a car and yet you will still be far off better than a person who does not read the word of God and just brushes his teeth and drives every day. A person who has the word of God and prayer and the spiritual things of God He'd do far off better if his body, even if his body was broken and battered. But it became more of a natural instinct to take care of our battered, beaten bodies with medicine, with medical expenses, with seeking after a job who can pay off the, the finances. That became more of a natural instinct to do. The fifth point, let's look at Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. The thirst of sinners... My fifth point is the thirst of sinners. Open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 55. You know why you wouldn't hesitate to open up that book? If there was too much sin in your mind that you just want to clean off. You know why you wouldn't hesitate to come to this church? Because there's just too much sin, sinful areas that you're surrounded by. You need a clean spiritual environment. You know why you wouldn't hesitate to sign up to be a Bible-believing Christian? Because you're just sick and tired and you feel like throwing up with too much filth and sin that you lived all your years in. You know why you have no thirst for the things of God? You're too comfortable with sin. You're not sick of sin. You're not sick of sin. That's why there are some people who live wicked lives. Once they get saved, they can come up much better Christians than those who grew up in a Christian church. Even a church with right doctrine, and you might say, why? They never had a thirst to begin with, whereas those wicked sinners, they did. Wow. Wicked sinners have a thirst for salvation. Why? They know they're a sinner. 
And they're headed for hell. And they want that precious blood to cleanse them. Amen. They want a clean slate because they can't get a clean slate in prison. But some of you people, you think you're too pure. You think you're too holy. And that sin, you've gotten accustomed and used to. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. God's inviting them into his waters that he wants them to drink. Look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You know, uh, God invites them for water to drink by forsaking their way, by leaving their sin. And that's what the devil has done. He replaced Bible reading with television. He replaced prayer with internet. He replaced worldly friends with biblical Christian friends. He replaced everything with sin. With sin. You know uh, what, gets, what encourages me to preach hard? I'll tell you what encourages me to preach hard. What encourages me to not quit on the pulpit? When I see too many souls going to hell. When I see so much filth of what they say against Jesus Christ and Christianity. Don't you think that makes, encourages me to put up a fight and not care what people say when I preach the word of God on the pulpit? You know why? Because I have a disgust of sin. I'm sick and tired of the wickedness in this world. You've gotten too accustomed. And that's why the devil can speed up his program a bit to heighten the sin even more because you're used to it. So in the next deeper level of sin, you'll be tolerating of it. That's why you don't have a thirst for the things of God. You wouldn't hesitate for the spiritual things of God if you had a disgust of sin. Aren't you sick and tired of this wicked world? Don't sing, I'll fly away, and don't mean it. Okay. You know why you sing, I'll fly away? There is a disgust of sin in this world, and in even, even in myself, if I'm going to be honest. I'm sick at, I don't know about you, but the one reason why I want to go to heaven is I don't want to let my God down again, and anything that I do will please Him. I'm sick and tired of letting Him down. I can't wait for a body like that. It's because of that, that's why I drag myself to church. I read his word and I pray and I try to win a soul. Why? Because I'm just sick and tired of letting God down. You're not sick and tired of letting God down. That's why you can keep up skipping Bible reading, prayer, and church. You're not sick and tired of letting God down. I don't know about you, I'm sick and tired of letting God down. I have a thirst for the things of the Lord and a disgust of sin. That's why you would cry out, I thirst, I thirst. Amen. My seventh point is thirst of the sermon on, uh, thir uh, thirst of sanctions. Look at Amos 8, Amos 8. Thirst of sanctions, thirst of sanctions. Now you get the current government saying, you know, we'll, we'll sanction Russia on this, we'll sanction on them on this and that and that, you know. What good it does, right? But you have to understand right here, it's one thing when half-witted Biden does it and people are like, I ain't scared of Biden. But then it's another thing of if the Lord does it. If the Lord puts a sanction. And you thought that you have it rough with the sanctions going on right now? When the Lord puts down the sanction, it's not physical, what you're going through. It's spiritual. The Lord will shut off His own word. Yes. If you don't think spiritual relationship, communion, and the things of God is that important to you, He'll sanction it. Look at Amos chapter 8. Amos chapter 8. The word of God reads at verse 11, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Can you believe that? They shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. You know how you're going 
to be thirsty to come to church again if you're not thirsty now? Oh, it's so hard to read the Bible. If only I can get a thirst. Simple. The Lord just makes the Bible illegal. Then let's see you go off a couple months without, without a word of God and Psalm 23 is fading from your memory and then you get fearful a little bit and you go, oh, if only I can find that book again. Wait till they shut down church. Oh, excuse me, you had that. And you're still not thirsty? Then the Lord will have to do more. He might just drop me dead. He might do that. And then you might open your eyes one day and go, wow, I, man, this was important in the ministry. Why didn't I get more involved? Why didn't I get some things right with the Lord? You, you, don't, you don't appreciate the brethren? He can take them away. He might drop them dead. Then let's see how the spiritual atmosphere is much better after that. You think that uh, prayer time is so much of an effort and you don't like praying to the Lord? Wait till you come to the point one day that uh, prayer is illegal. Oh, excuse me. They did that uh, schools where... You know, nobody appreciates anything anymore, so God just sanctions, puts down sanctions. You know, I never realized how much I longed for soul winning until I got my first soul for a long time. You know, it, it made me feel great. Oh, I had a thirst. Do you have a thirst for the things of God? If you don't, then the Lord has to put sanctions for you to open your eyes, for you to repent. Do you have a thirst for the things of God? You've forgotten. You've forgotten. That's why this is, you wonder why we're going through what we're going through right now? You lost a thirst for God. It's simple. Never appreciated church, the word of God, the ministry, the people God has given to you and singing and Lord's going to take it away. That's what he's done. He's done. He's taking it away one by one. So I think you should take opportunity of these sanctions and remind your spiritual nature I thirst. Let's go out on the streets again and then try to get some souls saved. Amen. Let's go back into getting that book out and read that precious word of God. Let's go out to church again and see what I've been missing out all this time in Bible study that I could have grown into. It's been so long, I just want to grow. Yeah. Or you haven't had enough yet. Maybe, maybe the Lord, he didn't do enough sanctions, huh? Maybe he's doing it the way Biden does it, and he has to do it in a way that will finally put the fear of God in you. I thirst. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. My seventh point is thirst of the Sermon on the Mount. Thirst of the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5. And then uh, we'll read Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, verse 6. Great passage. This almost became my main text. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, Jesus Christ says that you're blessed if you have a thirst for righteousness. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know why you have a thirst for the things of God? If you understand the blessing behind it. That's the thing. But uh, you already have too much worldly things in your life that blessed you. Can I repeat that again? You have too many worldly things in your life that blessed you, so you don't need a blessing from God. And that's why Revelation chapter 3, these people were blind, miserable, and naked in Laodicea, not longing for the spiritual things of God because they were too full and have need of nothing. I'll tell you why you don't have a thirst for that book. You don't think that's the only thing that will fulfill, fulfill your hunger. No, you got too much food in America, cheap food, good restaurants. That's why God has to amp up the prices a bit to make you finally see some things. Put your salary down a little bit. You got uh, too much of a comfortable life, good home, nice family, good clothes. 
vehicles, expenses all paid off. Even during the, that's why the Lord sent a pandemic to finally get you to hunger for something else out there. And some of you know this, the Lord had to take away something from you. Something that fulfilled your fleshly desire and dream. The Lord had to take that away for you to finally thirst for the things of God. And there are a few of you that happened that way. You know, that's what you got to realize. You got too much world in you. You need to get, at, get that world out. I'll tell you one thing. If you really believe that the spiritual thing of God, church, Bible reading, prayer, soul winning, growing in the word, memorizing scripture, singing hymns, the spiritual things of God is the only thing, listen up now, is the only thing that can give you joy, you'd have a thirst. But you don't believe in that. It's Bible reading plus playtime. It's prayer plus my favorite episode to catch up on. It's church plus my work is so great. It's uh, uh, Jesus Christ relationship plus uh, my family member, my friend. That's the reason why you don't have a thirst for the things of God. You know what you would believe? That's the only thing that fulfills my all in all is the spiritual thing of God. And if you had that, you'd put a smile on your face when you open up that book and then you just go, it's just like a whiff of fresh air. When you come into church and you go, man, finally something that's clean. Thirst of the Sermon on the Mount. You know why? You lost... Thank God, as Brother Randall once said it, thank God for the pandemic. Yeah. You know why? Uh, we got the blessing now. Yeah. Amen. I wonder if there was no pandemic. Where would some of you be? Oh, wow. This is a blessing. Can I repeat that again, what we have? Yeah. This is a blessing. The Bible says, blessed... Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. It's, it's a blessing if you have that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Do you recall? Do you remember? John 4. John 4. John 4. John 4. Do you hear the Holy Spirit inside you crying out, I thirst. You've forgotten your thirst. I hope that these points that I've given to you will remind you of your thirst and how to be thirsty and what's preventing your thirst so that you can eliminate those things that's preventing your thirst, uh, preventing you from being thirsty for the things of God. Excuse me. Look at John 4. John 4, now we encountered God manifest in the flesh. The Bible says right here at verse 7, There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith un unto her, Give me to drink. Verse 9, Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou, would have, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. My eighth point is thirst of the Samaritan woman. My eighth point is the thirst of the Samaritan woman. This Samaritan woman, when she went to Jesus Christ, she didn't recognize him as the Messiah or who he is. So he never, she never asked him for water to drink. It's amazing. The Lord had to be the one to ask her 
for water to drink when it should be the other way around. It should be, hey, that Samaritan woman needs water from the Almighty. I don't know about you, it shouldn't be the other way around. It shouldn't be God crying out, I thirst. It should be me crying out, I thirst, Lord. Will you give me water to drink? But it's so sad that the Lord has to be the one who asks you water for the spiritual things of God and not you. It's really sad. You know why you don't? You know why you don't have a thirst? You're like that Samaritan woman. You don't really know who he is. Can I repeat that again? You don't know who God really is. You don't. All you do is hear about stuff in the preaching or what people talk about or your own perception and knowledge, but you really don't know who he is. You might say, why is that? Because if you knew, you would have had a thirst and asked him water to drink. But because you don't know who he really is, you're not thirsty for him. You don't know who he really is and how good he is to you and how he can bless you with that spiritual thing, on how he can pull up great things and then spiritually mature you so much if you can't consistently go down that spiritual path. Amen. How merciful and gracious God is in spite of how bad things go in life. If you really knew yeah. who He is, no hesitation in Bible reading, prayer, church attendance, soul winning, the spiritual things of God, no hesitation. You do it, but you don't know who He is. Because you don't know who He is, you always go, why God? Why did this have to happen? Why do I have to do this thing? Why do I have to do that thing? And then why do I have to get involved in this thing in the church? Why do I have to? See, that's the thing. You know why? You don't know the real blessing and the gift. Like he said here, gift. The gift that he wants to give to you if you would only do it. <laughs> if you did know, you would. Every single one of us would attend church nonstop, read the Bible nonstop, pray nonstop. We would go out so winning 24-7 rather than once or twice a week. You know why? If we really knew what God would do. Amen. If God really showed you that just that one crown of righteousness or that one crown of glory, yeah. trust me, you go total 180. Oh, that's true. That's right. If you really knew the you that would turn out 10 years later, how God the Holy Spirit would mightily use you, your life, you keep pressing on. If you only knew how much great the new life is God has given to you and understood that, and how your new taste replaced the old taste, and those old tastes that you had was frivolous and vanity and it's definitely like not worth it. If you only knew that, you would do it. And that's the problem. That's the problem. If you only knew at that particular day you were going to skip Bible reading and prayer, a church service, a soul winning, or something spiritual for the Lord, if only you knew when you skipped that day to get involved in something in the ministry, if only you knew what Jesus was going to show you that very same day. If you knew you do it if you knew. What if it was some life verse that could have saved and changed your whole life forever Amen. during your Bible reading? What if it was that one prayer request the Lord was going to answer and send a miracle wow. at that day that you prayed? What if it was that one soul that did get saved Amen. when you went out soul winning? What if it was some, some sermon that would have transformed your whole life forever if it was that same day that you skipped. That's why if only you knew that day that you skipped, what God was going to give to you that very same day. See, it's, that's the reason why you're not thirsty. You know why people are always thirsty for the internet? For sin, for addiction? That feeling of satisfaction or something, and they never get it. I mean, once you take that one shot of heroin, you know, uh, or whatever it is, then the second, the third won't be enough. But they still do it. You know why? Because what they're searching for is if ah, I want that feeling again. Because they knew that feeling. They want it back. You wouldn't care how many Bible readings or prayers you would do just like those addicts. You wouldn't care how many times you would do it 
Well, it's not the day that I get the blessing. No, they don't care. They'll still click. They'll still watch the episodes if it's not the climatic moment. You know why? Because they don't care about that. If it's, if it's not that episode, if it's not that particular time that I'm going to get my blessing, they, they still search for it. They still long for it. Let me tell you something. That's what this blessed old book and prayer and the spiritual things of God will do endlessly for you. Much more than any other drug. You don't care about that way for drugs. Why not the word of God? Do you have a thirst? My ninth point, thirst of the Savior. Thirst of the Savior. Look at John 19. John 19. Our main text, John 19, 28. John 19, 28. The thirst of the Savior. You know why? You know why you should fulfill yourself with the spiritual things of God? Because of Jesus Christ. Because the Holy Spirit nature inside you that's crying out for water to drink. It's a crying baby. Some of you are still baby Christians, your spiritual state. You know what a baby wants? He wants something to eat and to drink. He wants to be fed. And you try starving out a baby, see what happens. And the Lord Jesus Christ, He doesn't have to die on a cross and beg you for thirst. He doesn't have to do that. He's already doing it right now. I need to read that. I need that book. I need time to talk to you in prayer. We need, I need church and I need... There's that spiritual nature inside. And you know what you've done? Verse 28, after this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. That is right now. That is Jesus Christ right now to you. And you haven't given him water to drink. You know what you've done? In verse 29, this is what you did. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. That's what you did. You know what you did? You did... Uh, Oh, yeah, just one verse of the Bible. Yeah, yeah, here you go. That's it. At least you got something to drink. Oh, yeah, here you go. You know, just uh, that one time when I went out soul winning. Good enough. You got your drink. Oh, yeah, that one time that I went to church service. There you go. That's good enough. You got your drink. Oh, hey, you know, uh, that prayer time, you know, just uh, the Wednesday with all those prayer requests. Yeah, that's good enough. You know what you've done? You've given the Lord vinegar mixed with gall to drink because you think that's good enough. You didn't give him real water. Yeah, do you give him real water? Real relationship with Jesus Christ? Reading the Bible nonstop, praying nonstop, going to every soul winning event, every church event, and every discipleship and training, any involvement that I can get involved with at the church or any other thing that I can do for you, Lord. Anything more that I can give you water to drink? Can I give you water to drink, Lord? No, you've given him gall and vinegar because you think that's good enough. Do you feel... The Lord crying within you, I thirst. You know what's really sad is that here's Jesus Christ dying on a cross, crying out, I thirst and I thirst. And here you are, that good Roman soldier that you are, putting the sponge, vinegar, and gall, and just giving him little sips and saying, okay, that's good enough. I want more. And no, 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 that's good enough. That's good enough. Let's starve it out a little bit more, you know. And then crying out, I thirst and I thirst every Sunday, weekdays, weekend, Wednesday, in the morning when you get up, in the evening before you go to sleep, I thirst and I thirst and you don't even give him vinegar to drink, you just withhold it. You go, now let's skip a couple more and then, okay, now's about time, here you go, take a sip and drink and that's good enough. And you've been doing that every single day. Ev, can you picture, you're, you're that Roman soldier, every single day, doing that to our Lord and Savior. And you know what the saddest thing is? Some of you still don't give him water to drink. And God forbid that it will be at the rapture, when the rapture sounds, 
When God cries out, I thirst, you can't give him water to drink then. He's crying out, I thirst and I thirst. But one day he's going to say this. If you look at, uh, you look at verse, uh, let's see right here. But you'll notice that when, what Jesus said at verse 30, he gave up the ghost, right? He cried out, it is finished. One day God's going to give that cry. The rapture is going to call. The rapture is going to sound and you're going to go up to heaven with him and he's going to say, it's finished. God, here's water, here's water. No, 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 we're done. Too late, too late. You know what's really sad? You'll never give him water to drink. That's what it means. You will never give him water to drink. You're just going to let him rot on a cross. It'll be too late. It'll be too late one day to give him water to drink. You know, that Roman soldier, can you imagine if I was that Roman soldier, if I only knew what the Lord was, if I only understood the previous points that I heard from this sermon, if I really understood that, I would have given him water to drink, that Roman soldier. Can you imagine that Roman soldier, if he's lost right now, what guilt in his conscience as he's burning in hell? I never given him one time water to drink. Not once. Imagine that Roman soldier, if he wanted, let's say he wanted to give Jesus water at the last minute, but then Jesus cried out, it is finished and died. How can he give him water after that? Put, a, put that water in his mouth. It's okay, Lord. Here you go. Get something to drink. But it's finished. Do you hear the Lord crying on a cross, crying to you, I thirst. Every head bow and every eye shut. Does it thirst for a cleansing of the blood? Does it thirst for an altar call? Does it thirst to get right with the Lord? Does it thirst for renewal? Do you have a thirst for real repentance? I thirst. That book is too precious. Our time with the Lord when we talk to Him is too precious. That soul is too precious. What we have here in this church, little, not upgraded, not too much. Yeah, people could be better, things could be better. No, it's too precious. Too precious what we have. Take every opportunity and chance in this life because you only have one life to live. Live every second and moment with the spiritual things of God. You've forgotten your thirst because you've been too full of the world. You've just been too busy. There was something of a burden to you, you thought, when you saw the spiritual thing of God. And God forbid that some of you are like Samson, burning yourself out, just keep fighting, going on with life, fighting, going on with life without a drop to drink from on high. And God can put all the sanctions He wants, but it's still not enough for you. That Holy Spirit nature within you is crying out. Is there something within you? Don't you hear the Holy Spirit calling? Doesn't that have something within you where it cries out, for love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, holiness, purity, fruit, just to see some fruit. The Lord is crying out, I thirst. And yet you left the Savior hanging on a rugged cross as that Roman soldier. And you're just content to give him vinegar to drink. Vinegar. Vinegar. Like Jesus said, if you only knew who it was, who it was that asked for water to drink, you would have asked him for a drink. That song that we sing about tis marvelous and wonderful the half has never yet been told 
has a lot of truth behind it. You don't know even the half of God, the wonderful, almighty, great King of Kings. You don't even know the half of it. What more He can do for you if you only knew Him, if you only knew what kind of a God He was. Any pain, any sorrow you go through, you just go through it. If you only knew, you really knew what kind of a God He is. You don't know who He is. And if you remain that way, and I pity you, then God will bring up sanctions. And those things will continue to grow. And God forbid, one day, it is finished. And you cannot give Him water to drink. There's a song that says, take time to be holy. There's a verse that the psalmist said that early, early will I rise to seek thee. There's a verse where the psalmist says, when I lay my head at night, I pray. Beginning in prayer, ending in prayer. A natural instinct to just go to Church and not just church with vinegar and gall, but just real water. Every moment, soul winning as well. Memorizing scripture because I just have too much junk in my head. I just want something swimming in my unconscious mind that's pure and that's King James that has power. Will you recall? Your thirst. Will you feed your hungry soul? Your thirsty soul. Is it feeling some refreshment right now? Let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for that precious book. You know, Lord, now that I think about it, the majority of the New Testament time period, they didn't have that book in their hands. They had to memorize scripture. They had to pass it along. Lord, we have it now. But Lord, the devil has put Laodicea in our midst. And he tried to give us false food, false liquids to fulfill our hunger and thirst. We haven't come to an acknowledgement that the only thing that can satisfy me is that precious book, is that spiritual thing you've given to me. Recall our thirst once more, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.